Art as a profession for women really began to open up in the late 19th century, particularly in the 1920s. Pioneer modernists are eight artists whose work is very distinct, each from the other. So it's part of a new conception of modernism as uh, an individual response to the modern world. Clara Mars, Francis Greenman, are really part of a broader movement of women moving into the arts. Clara Mars was um, an artist closely associated with St. Paul, but with connections far beyond. She's known primarily as a printmaker. She's uh, famous for her etchings, and yet she was also an important painter. Clara met Clem Hoppers, a young artist who was 22 years younger than she was. They formed a, a very close partnership that lasted until the end of her life. Clem and Clara decided that they would go to Paris in 1928 specifically to study etching. Clara found really the perfect subject matter for her rather whimsical turn of mind. She had a great sense of humor. And so what she did was transform what is really a noisy spectacle into these very graceful images. And so her love of pattern, her love of design, the uh, rather flat approach that many modernists took fit this subject matter so well. And uh, so she ended up with a suite of 16 circus etchings that are really some of her very best work. Clem and Clara were part of that scene in Paris that was uh, quite experimental, that uh, also fostered freedom from conventions. And so they brought a lot of the spirit and a lot of the techniques back from Paris. This is a rather intimate portrait of her young friend, Clem. It's a naturalistic portrait, but she's greatly simplified the forms. She has used very distinct areas of color that aren't necessarily naturalistic, so there is an, an abstracted quality in his blocky form, but it's a simple elemental portrait into which she has put a great deal of feeling. Through the 1940s, she did many, many etchings, and she used these as oftentimes as social commentary. She was often interested in puncturing social pretensions, so some of her work is kind of uh, satirical, uh, especially something like the Thursday Club. Clara really uh, moved away from printmaking in the 1950s and 60s. Those last two decades of her life, she did a great deal of large-scale painting. Paintings like The Visitors show a different side of her, and uh, I think that these deal more with psychology and with inner states of mind than, let's say, the Circus Print series. She retained her very skillful use of design and composition, and yet she brings in, I think, more human feeling and more observation of psychological states than her early work. Frances Krenmer Greenman 
specialized in portraits. She loved people. She was very interested in establishing a kind of life for herself, very different from the environment in Aberdeen, South Dakota, where she grew up. She always yearned for uh, the high life, and she did uh, through her hard work and her talent and perseverance, she succeeded in creating that kind of life for herself. She uh, showed artistic talent at an early age, and she had the very enviable situation of she was an only child, and her two parents were completely dedicated to her career as an artist. They accompanied her to Washington, D.C. They then accompanied her to New York while she studied at the Art Students League. In 1912, she went up to the White Earth Indian Reservation with the goal of, she said, of becoming the greatest Indian painter in the world. And uh, there she painted such characters as woman riding on the wind. Uh, Greenman found the White Earth Indian Reservation rather depressing. And this says a lot more about Greenman than it does about the reservation. She was much more interested in the glamorous life of society. When she came back to Minneapolis, she married John Greenman. Uh, Greenman was a wealthy banker and, at least in the early years, was very supportive of his wife's career. During this period, she made some experiments using very bold, brash colors and some expressionistic distortions. And she was regarded as something of a wild painter. And she quickly learned that uh, these kinds of experiments were not the way to go if she were to establish herself as a fashionable portrait painter, and that really is what she wanted to do. The janitor's family, was also part of her effort to look at social realities and suggest the conditions of modern life. She emphasizes in her composition the empty table, and uh, there's a real suggestion here that the janitor's family is suffering some privations. This was treated with a little bit of uh, wariness by Minneapolis audiences. It seemed to be a radical painting, maybe a little subversive, uh, but this fit in with her uh, agenda at the time of painting real life in a rather gritty way. Her husband, John Greenman, lost his money in the stock market crash of 1929. Her response to this was to begin traveling across the country by train and looking for portrait commissions. She took up residence in Hollywood, and this really seemed to answer her desire for the glamorous life. And she did portraits of movie stars like Mary Pickford. And um, it was fun seeing newspaper accounts. They posed for a lot of pictures in front of the portrait. And I've always been amused because Frances Kramer Greenman looks more theatrical than Mary Pickford in these photographs. She did decide to settle permanently in Minneapolis. When she did settle, she had so much work. She did a very good portrait of Alfred Pillsbury. And uh, in 1967, she also did the portrait of Governor Carl Rolveg. So she achieved her aim of being a fashionable portraitist. This was a very good environment for her. There's been a continuum, I think, of women in the arts in Minnesota. And I think that is a tribute to the progressive nature of Minnesota. Women have been very strong in the tradition and uh, it's really admirable that these women had the drive, the persistence, the support that enable them to make independent careers as artists. That's still very hard today for male or female, but they were able to do it. Mm -hmm. 
Minnesota Original is made possible by the State Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Minnesota.